Well, it's shaping up to be an absolutely brutal winter. Two ice storms in the past week. Now, they look nice from inside, sipping hot cocoa, but if you actually had one of these thrown at you in a survival situation, it would be very bad news. Now, if you're actually caught in an ice storm, priority number one is to find shelter. Not make shelter, you don't really have that time. Because freezing rain and sleet will give you hypothermia very quickly, way faster than snow will. And you'll notice that when it fell, the rain had a directionality to it, which is why I've chosen this thicket here. It has a large tree, these vines that you could, you know, support stuff on, but this large tree is the most important part. If you hunkered down behind this, you'd probably be able to avoid 99% of the rain and you'd have a much higher chance of survival. The next order of business is making fire, and that can be a little difficult considering all the standing dead plant matter that one would typically use to make a fire to start one is covered in ice. And ice melts into water and water puts out fires, especially when they're very young. So all of this plant matter is effectively useless at making fires, but there is one thing that should remain dry that you can use as tinder. Now for those of you who don't know, birch bark is flammable. And since the ice had a direction to it when it fell, only one side of this tree is covered in ice. So these strands would be your lifeline in starting a fire. Okay, so we have birch bark, we have our fire starter, but we still need something to burn and all these sticks are covered in a layer of ice. Now this is where if you didn't have a knife, especially a large knife, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Now what you can do with these sticks is first, I'm going to use the back of the machete to break the ice off as best I can. You can also use the side to scrape, but mostly ice is fairly brittle and you can break it off. And if it's sticking too much, you can always just switch to another stick. But what you can do, I'm going to brace with the other side. I'm going to scrape. Now you'll notice the wood underneath there is dry. The reason you don't want to just take the ice off is one, it tends to stick on there. And two, even the tiniest little bit will melt, turn into a water droplet and could uh, harm your fire pretty significantly. What you can do to turn this one single stick into a large amount of dry material to start fires with and keep them going is you can cut into it. Now if you break through, you'll see the inside is completely dry. And if you take small pieces off, sort of shave them off, this is a lot easier to do with two hands, mind you. But these shavings, let me grab this one here. These shavings, especially if you get them long and thin, they burn really well. And you could use that to make your fire. And once you've built your fire, you can concentrate on maybe making a more permanent shelter, just in case the weather decides to hammer you down again the next night. As for food and water, all of that is honestly secondary at this point. Once you have your fire, you could take some of the ice that's clean and boil that. And there's your drinking water. Food is absolutely not a priority right now. Your priorities in a situation like this are to stay put, stay warm, and hope you're found. Well, I hope you guys learned something. See ya.